A grim-faced mummy stares into the void, while somber and solemn brass music plays endlessly, the ever-present sound of a beating heart reflecting the horror of death more and more. A bat swings its wings toward a calm and peaceful town. Lucy has been waking up to horrible nightmares lately. Luckily, she has been able to calm down from her nightmare fears with the gentle comfort of her thoughtful husband, Jonathan, at her side every time. Lucy and Jonathan are a newlywed couple. Jonathan works as a house agent, and this day he is appointed to go to the castle of Count Dracula, who lives in a remote location, to negotiate a deal. If successful, he will be given a large commission. Jonathan, wanting to make money to improve his family's life, agrees without hesitation, but Lucy learns of this and strongly disapproves. It is said that the castle where Count Dracula lives is very strange, not only infested with wolves, but also people have seen ghosts there, and Lucy's intuition always tells her that Jonathan's trip would be dangerous, so she looks sad and asks him not to go. But Jonathan, who never believes in these ghostly rumors, insists on going. Lucy, though not supportive, chooses to respect Jonathan's wishes out of love. Jonathan says goodbye to Lucy and sets off on a journey into the unknown. A cluster of clouds gently gathers and slowly surges, appearing mysterious and unpredictable. Lucy's mind is restless, and the wait for her husband's return feels interminable. Once again, she awakens to a nightmare, witnessing bats struggling against the curtains as they fly into the room. It's an unsettling omen. One night, clad in white, Lucy sleepwalks out of her room, arms outstretched, her figure reflected in the river. Reality blurs for Lucy, and she seemingly telepathically witnesses an image of Jonathan being bitten by a vampire on the neck. Shocked, she curls up on the edge of the bed, screaming her husband's name. Her heart races, pulse quickened by fear. Jonathan must be in danger. She senses his fear acutely. Lucy longs to rush to his aid, but with a sudden and severe fever, she is urged to stay home to recover. Meanwhile, on the other side, Jonathan faces adversity in the old castle. During the contract signing, Count Dracula catches sight of Lucy's portrait and is captivated by her beauty. He falls in love at first sight of her snow white, slender neck, swiftly sealing the deal with Jonathan. Jonathan, however, is uneasy. He feels trapped in some kind of trouble. Leafing through a book about vampires, he becomes increasingly convinced that Dracula is the legendary vampire, desperate to escape the castle. Jonathan finds Dracula lying in a coffin. Dracula's eyes, open yet devoid of life, confirm Jonathan's fears. Witnessing Dracula departing the castle in a coffin at night, Jonathan realizes that Lucy is his target. In a burst of determination, he races from the old castle, intent on reaching home before Count Dracula does. With no means to rescue Jonathan in person, Lucy finds solace on the beach where they used to walk together. She faces the sea, sitting alone on a grassy mound, silently bearing the tide of thoughts and worries, resembling a sorrowful portrait. When the maid comes to comfort her, she sadly remarks, God always seems distant when we need him most. No one comprehends Lucy's helplessness and inner torment at this moment. As time passes, her anxiety mounts, sensing an approaching evil force. Lucy's eyes reflect growing melancholy. Each day of waiting finds her sitting alone by the window, gazing into the distance with a vacant expression, yearning for her husband's safe return. Her worst fears materialize when a ghost ship docks. No survivors are found aboard. The crew has succumbed to unknown causes, their blue corpses surrounded by rats. It is suspected they fell victim to the dreaded bubonic plague. Dracula, a bloodthirsty specter, arrives with the ship, heralding a nightmare of destruction for the town. The following day, a knock on the door brings a surprising sight. Jonathan has returned. The man Lucy has longed for day and night is finally home. Amidst tearful reunion, Lucy is distraught to find Jonathan disoriented, unable to recognize her. Strangely, he begins to fear sunlight. Reading Jonathan's diary, Lucy unravels the mystery and realizes everything that happened to Jonathan. At night, Dracula himself carries the coffin he rests in during the day and takes up residence in the mansion next to Jonathan's house. Massive shadows loom on the walls like ghastly, ferocious beasts. The night air is thick, and the square is sparsely populated. Dracula arrives at Lucy's house and becomes even more infatuated as he glimpses Lucy's melancholic, beautiful face through the glass. He can't resist entering to express his love to her. Lucy is seated at her dresser when the door creaks open. Dracula's dark shadow is suddenly cast in the mirror as the door swiftly shuts. His shadow reappears as if passing through the door, the outline of his bad ears and elongated fingernails visible. Initially startled by his terrifying visage, Lucy eventually calms herself. Death is inevitable, and as she does not fear death, she naturally does not fear Dracula. Upon hearing of death, Dracula, however, states, more terrible than death, is to want to die but fail. 
he has endured long, solitary hours, longing for love, for the pure affection Lucy bestows upon Jonathan. In exchange, he offers to restore Jonathan to his former self and bring peace to the town. Lucy finds it absurd that her love should be reserved solely for Jonathan. Even God cannot possess such love. Undoubtedly steadfast, Lucy reveals the cross she wears around her neck, compelling Dracula to retreat. Lucy proceeds to find a book from the gypsy in Jonathan's traveling bag, Misferatu, the immortal demon. He drinks human blood and turns his victims into black ghosts. Like a ghost, he casts no reflection, walking through walls and entering rooms. Resembling a bat, he glides into darkened bedrooms. Disguised as a black wolf, he preys on his victims relentlessly. Whoever is ensnared by him loses all hope. The book also details how to destroy a vampire. A crucifix induces fear but does not ensure complete annihilation. To truly vanquish a vampire, a pure woman must lure the vampire until dawn breaks. The first rays of sunlight render him powerless, allowing for a stake to be driven into his heart, thus destroying him utterly. In the town square, shrouded by the Black Death, a surreal mix of despair and merriment unfolds. Death tolls rise, and funeral processions become commonplace. Initially, residents adhere to funeral customs, maintaining a semblance of order. However, as the plague escalates, they realize the futility of civilized etiquette in the face of unstoppable death. They dance and revel with abandon, embracing the fleeting joy before their demise. The presence of rats and mice underscores the impending apocalypse. Amidst mournful music, well-dressed people share a final supper with white rats. Lucy attempts to warn the people about the truth, but they dismiss her as delusional due to fear of the plague. Seeking aid from DR. Van Helsing, Lucy is met with skepticism rooted in scientific inquiry. Feeling frustrated by their ignorance, Lucy resolves to save her husband and the townspeople alone. Before acting, she shares a heartfelt kiss with Jonathan and safeguards him with holy items to prevent his transformation into a vampire. With a tragic beauty that stares death in the face, Lucy adorns herself in purity and innocence to ensnare Dracula. Her sculpted face alternates between tension and uncertainty, then settling into the resolute honesty of a brave sacrifice. Confronted with her stunning allure, Dracula finds himself unable to resist. Clad in white like snow, Lucy stands in stark contrast to Dracula's black attire, embodying the dichotomy of angel and devil. In the convergence of the most beautiful and the most grotesque, an overwhelming sadness envelopes us. Ultimately, Lucy succumbs to Dracula's fangs. As dawn breaks, he falls into a coma. The gentle morning light bathes Lucy's serene face, her smile a testament to the worthiness of her sacrifice. Van Helsing arrives too late, but repents for doubting Lucy. He drives a stake through Dracula's heart, ending his reign of terror. Yet, Jonathan is completely overtaken by vampirism, losing his humanity. He falsely accuses Van Helsing of murder, coaxes the maid to sweep away the holy items surrounding him, reveals two fangs, and tears off the cross necklace. With the Count vanquished, Jonathan embraces his immortal fate, departing into the desert. The vampire's legacy lives on, forever immortal. Nisferatu, Phantom Dernacht is an early vampire-themed film, aiming to deliver an anti-religious, anti-modernity message in its conclusion. Director Herzog's adaptation of Dr. Van Helsing's character serves as an indication. Van Helsing transitions to a conservative and narrow-minded Scientologist, ultimately being arrested by a symbol of authority rendered ineffective by the plague. In the absence of divine intervention and the limitations of science, only the steadfast love and unwavering dedication of women can extinguish the eternal existence of vampires. Ironically, Jonathan remains unsaved. Not only does he inherit the curse of vampirism, but he also defies the traditional limitations of vampires, becoming immune to sunlight. This deviation from the traditional vampire lore underscores Herzog's rebellious intentions. Aside from its thematic exploration, the film stands out for its visually stunning cinematography. Each frame is imbued with dreamy, desolate, and mysterious colors, evoking an exotic atmosphere akin to oil paintings. The depiction of uninhabited forests, rocky ruins, and castles enhances the movie's aura of ancient legend, exuding a chilling yet captivating beauty. In this time, despite not fully displaying the hysterical madness, the actress Ajani still reveals her determination to struggle for love. As one of the few women in vampire movies with a sense of resistance, when no one else is available to lend a hand, Lucy steadfastly chooses to sacrifice herself. Ultimately, Count Dracula forgets the time of the cock crow and the pleasure of blood and perishes in the sunlight, thus fulfilling Lucy's role as a savior of society and a martyr of love. Thanks for joining Zombies Cat on this movie. Abduct the subscribe button, hit the bell, and stay me out of this world. Until next time, keep those reels rolling. Zombies Cat signing off.